As much as we all love Flexbox, it has its pain points. Chances are, if you've clicked on this video, you've run into the issue of weird overflows or elements going bigger than they should be or not shrinking or even growing as they're expected to. There's a reason for it. It's because of minimum width and minimum height. It sounds kind of dumb, it's because it is. And I wanna showcase a quick fix that can help in a lot of these cases that is now being advocated for by none other than the creator of Tailwind. Yes, this tweet came from Adam himself, suggesting that we set a minimum width of zero on every element on our page, similar to how we override the border box behaviors across our apps with CSS resets. He's suggesting we do the same with min width. And the more I think about it, the more I think I'm on the same page. So what exactly happens if you don't set a min width? I have two quick articles here to showcase just how bad things are. First one, really short and simple. We have the classic example of overflowing text. Even if you use overflow wrap break word to try and break this down so it doesn't overflow, it doesn't work. To fix it, you have to set a min width of zero, which makes no sense, right? Because the element's not being told to be smaller, is not being told it can shrink. What about min width zero indicates to the browser to stop making this bigger? It's just confusing. And chances are you've had weird bugs where you use the flex box with multiple children and it would overflow for no reason. And in a lot of those cases, applying a min width or a min height zero would probably fix it. The number of times I've run into this in my own code base is hell. The tutorial I'm currently working on building ran into this problem in the first 10 minutes of me building it. And it took me like half an hour to solve it and get it right. And then another 20 minutes to do it in a way that I'm confident I can explain it to my viewers in my content. Because this is stupid. This is really dumb. The default behavior not working <laughs> and requiring you to set this unrelated property in order to make it behave the way it should have, the way it, the code describes it, is nonsense. There's a little more in this article, but it's mostly focused on the one min with text example. Thankfully, everyone's favorite CSS guru, Josh Comio, has made a much better mini article within his greater guide to Flexbox. If you haven't already read through his interactive guide to Flexbox, it's phenomenal. I highly recommend it. And once again, quick shout out to Sebastian for providing these awesome resources as per usual. His replies on Twitter are the source of lots of wisdom. If you're not already following him, you probably should be. Anyways, the minimum size gotcha. As Josh says here, there's one more thing we need to talk about, which again, context of the whole article about Flexbox, which is the minimum width weirdness. Suppose we're building a fluid search for an e-commerce store. You have this search, fancy shoes, and container width. What? What's happening there? Why is fancy shoes breaking out of its container. That's really dumb. The code here must be terrible. Flex shrink is a default value of one and we haven't removed it. So the search input should be able to shrink as much as it needs to. Even if you put a flex shrink on this manually, it's not going to. It's going to have this weird minimum width that it is enforcing that you can't get smaller than. So how do we get around this? Well, here's the deal. In addition to the hypothetical size, it's another important size that Flexbox algorithm cares about, the minimum size. The Flexbox algorithm refuses to shrink a child below its minimum size. The content will overflow rather than shrink no matter how high you crank the flex shrink value. This is obnoxious. Text inputs have a default minimum size of 170 to 200 pixels. It varies between browsers. This is the limitation you're running into. Why does input have a randomly hard-coded minimum size, by the way. This is the chaos of browser standards that we've been dealing with for decades now. Whenever somebody says building for the web is easy, they just haven't done it long enough to run into things like this. So because of these existing legacy behaviors that are embedded in the entirety of the web, in, in order to make sure old apps that use these weird expectations continue to function for the rest of time, we now, as the end developer, have to care and fix these things with really weird things like minimum width zero. Here's another example where the limiting factor might be the element's content. So if we resize this container, now the longest word is wider than this container needs to be to shrink properly. And rather than breaking the word, it's just going to give itself the size it needs. Even if you set a break rule where it breaks words when it's out of space, it's going to give itself enough space for the biggest word, unless you tell it to not do that. The auto behavior for minimum width is stupid. And here, it's just going to break your app. So the solution for all of this is setting a min width. If we go back to this example, when the min width is auto, this breaks out. When it's zero, it doesn't. So yes, you have to apply this to almost all of your children of flex containers if you want them to behave properly when you're shrinking sizes. By setting min zero directly to the flex child, we tell the flexbox algorithm to override that awful built-in value. Because we've set this, the element can now shrink as much as necessary.
Proceed with caution. It's worth noting that this minimum does serve a purpose. It's meant to act as a guardrail to prevent something even worse from happening. So if you don't, or if you set the min with zero here, something worse happens, where now the elements are being flattened and covering each other and giving you a terrible user experience. What do we do about that? With great power comes great responsibility, and min width is a particularly powerful property when it comes to Flexbox. It's gotten me out of a jam more than once, but I'm always careful to make sure I'm not making things worse. Again, this is why that default was a little bit scary. I still think I'm going to try it, to be clear, because when I run into this edge case, I want to see it and fix it. I don't want the default to be elements not not collapsing. So the solution he didn't do here would be to fix the wrap behavior. So when you're word wrapping, because things are too small, it will wrap how it needs to in order to take advantage of the space. The point of this is not to go deep on all the weird behaviors of text wrapping. The point is to explain why your flex box isn't behaving at all. And as weird and bad as the initial behavior of the min with here seemed to be, I think it's at a clearer point where you can make fixes Whereas when it breaks this way, it is incredibly unintuitive what's going wrong. If you've applied a flex shrink to this and to this and the container gets smaller and these don't get smaller, it's really, really confusing, incredibly confusing. And the reason I am leaning towards actually changing the default in your apps to be min with zero instead of min with auto is so that when you run into those cases, the problem is more apparent. Because either way, when you run into that overflow case, you're gonna have to apply this behavior and then you're gonna have different edge cases instead. Why do we have the additional step? So yeah. If you ever had a scroll container break weird with a flex box, or you've ever had some text overflow where it shouldn't, chances are you need a MinWith. And hopefully this quick demo of MinWith will show you why that's the case. If you want to see more crazy CSS stuff, I'll pin a video in the corner all about it. Whenever YouTube thinks you like below, it's also a good video. Appreciate you all a ton as always. I'll see you in the next one. Peace nerds.